Welcome to my course electrochemical energy storage and uh, this is module number 7 where we are talking about introduction to the battery pack design and this is lecture number 35 the last lecture of this module where we will be talking about packaging of the battery pack and battery testing, material selection, sealing of enclosure testing including safety and abuse test. So, in this particular uh, um, class uh, we talk about mechanical packaging and uh, materials, what are the materials used, then uh, uh, what are the international protection classes, then battery testing how exactly and what exactly are tested, then failure mode of lithium ion cells which is uh, a bit recap from the concepts already I developed earlier and characterization and performance testing, then abuse testing and how the certifications that are usually done for the battery pack. And um, this is the actual now the battery pack in the last lecture also I showed you the same figure. So, this is a typical package that we have done for our battery module which is uh, typically 28 volt 16 ampere hour module. So, the module design it consists of the battery module uh, where assembly of lithium ion cells into a single mechanical and electrical unit. So, all the cells are there inside. Uh, so, it consists of lithium ion cells they are connected with bus bars then voltage and temperature monitoring PCB it is a part of uh, your BMS then thermal management components and the overall mechanical structure. So, this is a typical 30 volt 8 ampere lithium ion battery module um, that uh, I just uh, I showed uh, as a typical example. Now, the type of cells could be pouch cell uh, and usually if you are using a pouch cell, uh, they are always uh, uh, kept under pressurized um, state. Uh, so, you use plastic or metal plates because you know that the power cell even after forming cycle uh, they have a tendency to swell a bit and that will uh, disturb the mechanical integrity inside the battery pack. So, they are pressurized and uh, screw tight within two plastic plate or uh, metal plate and for prismatic cell it is already there inside a hard plastic cover case. So, it is not required and uh, you may have to stack the cell. So, stacking of cells in plastic or in a metallic platform is required. Serviceability issue that is important because the cells should be easily replaceable in a module. So, you can easily detect the faulty cell because you are using it uh, with a BMS. So, you are monitoring each cell state of health. So, the serviceable uh, serviceability that is important because you may have to change the cell. Uh, welding the cells together versus fastening it with the appropriate screw need to be decided because if you weld it, it is rel relatively difficult for you to take the cell out, but if it is fastening with the, the screw tight uh, way, then uh, it is a bit easier. And of course, the module should be rugged in terms of cell connectivity and packaging. So, the lot of wires uh, may be there depending on the type of BMS that you are using. Uh, so, specific tests are there uh, to know about um, how good is the uh, connectivity, cell connectivity and ruggedness of the cell. So, uh, uh, that these are the factors that one should consider when you are designing a module. So, there are international protection classes mostly for dust and object protection at one end and another one is the liquid protection. So, zero always stands for no protection both for dust and liquid. Uh, one stands for protection against body surface touch, uh, protection against dripping water that is for the liquid one. Number two is uh, protection against finger insertion 
and here number 2 is protection against 50 degree of dripping of water very stringent uh, uh, conditions are uh, maintained. Uh, then uh, class 3 is protection against tools and thick wear and for liquid class 3 is protection against spraying water. So, for 3 they should be simultaneously uh, satisfied. Class 4 is protection against small parts and screws and here protection against splashing water. Then 5 is dust access not entirely protected and uh, here 5 is protection against water jet. Uh, number 6 is no ingress of dust, no contact and 6 is protection against a very pressurized water 100 kilo Pascal of water jet is protected. So, there are many uh, international protection classes. So, one is this IP 6 K 9, where the first two digit, uh, this is one for this uh, first one for the dust and the second one for the liquid. So, here you can see it is 6 0, that means no ingress or dust or no contact, but uh, this is 0. So, for liquid it does not have any protection. So, similarly, uh, there are uh, NEMA rating. So, usually internationally the, the whole battery pack, uh, once you uh, packaged the module with BMS thermal management system inside a, an enclosure, then they are internationally um, given this number, so that you can understand uh, the quality of protection that you will get out of this battery pack. So, battery testing, uh, it consists of three important categories. The first one is characterization and performance testing, which anyway you will have to do mostly done, done at the cell level, followed, followed by module level, then pack level and then the whole system level. So, at each of this level, you will have to test it. So, if you fabricate the cell, first to do the electrochemical characteristics of the cell, then uh, prepare a module and then connect the module and then make a pack and then finally, with BMS and all other thermal management system, you do the system level uh, electrochemical test. The second one is abuse testing, that means you force the battery into situations that will drive it to fail and evaluating the results in order to make change in the design to mitigate these failures. So, abuse testing include uh, overcharge testing, then over voltage testing, then nail penetration tested. Basically, it is a short circuiting test with a nail you short circuit the anode and cathode. Then separate short circuiting test uh, that means connect the uh, part this uh, anode with cathode the two terminals and drop testing for the impact resistance, you fall the battery from a height and usually abuse testing is done to find the limits of the safe performance of the cells as well as the packs. So, at cell level you can do the abuse testing, particularly this nail penetration test, the impact tests um, or you can do at the pack level. And then certification testing, this is done by completing a very specific set of tests determined uh, by a stringent specific specification made by the competent authority uh, and which is internationally honored. So, uh, this three level of testing is required when you make the whole battery pack. So, then you will have to make a design verify plan and report DVPR. So, here uh, you first, uh, this is a long table. So, you will have to uh, clarify that what is the test number, then specification and test method, then the description of the test, then what is the acceptance criteria, then what was the test stage, what was your target, when test started, when test completed, whether it passed or failed the test and the actual results. So, this is a DVPR uh, that is actually reported with the battery pack. And uh, the failure mode for lithium battery, 
uh, this again I, uh, I am, I am uh, talking about. Um, it can be categorized into two modes, one is the internal failure and another one is the external failure. Internal failure is usually uh, manufacturing defect, you remember we talked about the jelly roll formation for the pow cell and also the cylindrical cell. So, if the debris uh, is there accumulated in the jelly roll, um, so that is one kind of uh, um, uh, cause of uh, internal failure or increase in internal resistance. Um, so, that is also another cause of internal failure, uh, particularly with the cycling due to variety of uh, causes including SEI formation and other uh, types of causes that will increase the internal resistance. So, that is the cause of the internal failure. External failure is the battery operates outside the safety zone or due to the failure of uh, the control of thermal system that leads to a thermal runaway. And uh, one example is uh, say vehicle collision, so that is entirely external, uh, external failure, the battery was on and then the vehicle collided, so it catches fire. So, this kind of uh, uh, example is uh, the so called external failure. Now, internal failure modes uh, is uh, one is increase the internal resistance. So, that is uh, essentially due to the growth of the ACI layer. So, one can do this uh, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy that will help to determine um, it. Uh, so, that uh, already I explained in one of my earlier lectures. So, as the cell cycles um, cell is cycled repeatedly charge and discharge cycle. So, lithium ion tend to trap in the SCI layer with the time and that causes the uh, charge transfer resistance to increase. Uh, chemical breakdown of the electrolyte that is another uh, cause. So, that generation uh, that generates gases within the cell. So, the cell performing at higher temperature that usually expedite this kind of gas formation. And uh, as I mentioned earlier that the role of additives uh, are beneficial to impede this uh, uh, any possible thermal runaway due to this. Uh, separator can also begin to break down again at high temperature. So, initially the lithium ion flow will stop. Uh, because it will melt and the pore will get clogged. Uh, then if it completely melts, then uh, there is there will be short circuit uh, and thermal runaway because of the heat generation. Lithium plating is another cause of internal failure. So, cells are operating under over voltage or under voltage. So, lithium is electro plated resulting the capacity drop with cycling. So, these are the actual causes of internal failure. External failure mode um, puncture of the lithium cells uh, that resulting the short circuiting due to heavy impact as I mentioned car crash, then uh, rapid loss of electrolyte, massive heat generation resulting thermal runaway. Crash simulation is usually done. Uh, with the original equipment manufacturer to place the battery in a suitable zone inside the vehicle that is very important. So, that even if the car crashes, uh, it does not have any catastrophic effect um, due to the battery uh, explosion or uh, the battery um, total failure thermal run runaway. So, the standard characterization test um, that is uh, usually done uh, is a couple of specific tests. One is static capacity testing. So, the battery capacity uh, in ampere hour uh, and in watt hour at specified discharge rate. So, this uh, um, ampere hour the total charge or the energy um, that uh, actually you will have to test. Capacity fed is another thing, uh, cyclability, irreversible capacity lost based on repeated cycling that also we will have to test. Uh, hybrid power pulse characterization test depending on the use, various protocol is followed according to the specific uh, use. 
uh, for example, it could be a short period of discharge, then a rest period, then short period of charge, then repeat the same. So, various types of uh, charge discharge cycle depending on uh, the use of the battery that uh, uh, usually is done. So, this is hybrid power pulse characterization testing is done. And then from this uh, uh, HPPC additional data are estimated. For example, resistance as a function of depth of discharge, availability power at different depth of discharge, then power and energy fade, maximum and minimum depth discharge. So, these are all estimated. So, typically the battery tester looks like this. In fact, this one is um, we have it uh, from a company called Biologic. The model is BCS 815. So, it has 8 means 8 channels are there. So, you can connect your battery for charge discharge measurement and uh, 15 ampere each of this channel can give. So, um, uh, this is a quite useful for our pouch cell and cylindrical cell of uh, uh, capacity um, like uh, 1 to 10 ampere hour. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, we have uh, several other uh, cycler, but this is one of them. So, similar type of cycler you can stack together uh, like this and you can imagine. So, here um, 8, 9 uh, cyclers are there. So, number of cells you can test uh, at the cell level or you can integrate each of this channel and the whole pack also can be tested. So, uh, this uh, is very, very useful. Uh, equipment and uh, this is also powered by uh, a reasonably good uh, software uh, to from the measured data from the charge discharge data or cyclability data. Even you can do the impedance spectroscopy measurement of each cell using this particular equipment and then there is a powerful software to estimate um, various characteristics, electrochemical characteristics using the software tool. So, it is connected with the computer to uh, do this kind of uh, characterizations. Um, additional characterization testing that is usually done is a self discharge test. Uh, so, the battery is stored and how much energy is stored uh, over a period of time. So, you know the energy is Q into V. So, uh, whether capacity or voltage if it uh, reduces then it, it will it will be uh, reflected in the self discharge test uh, at open circuit condition. Cold cranking test that is the power of the battery can be provided at low temperatures. So, how effective is your electrolyte uh, operating at lower uh, temperature? Then thermal performance testing, amount of power and energy available at different temperatures which is very important for the operations of the uh, developed battery pack. Then energy efficiency test, how efficient is the overall system design and how much energy is lost during its use because it can take energy to run uh, its uh, BMS, to run its uh, thermal management system. So, what is the energy efficiency eventually uh, at the end of the for the battery pack that is to be tested. As I said cycle life testing is important. How many charge discharge cycles at various C rate before the capacity falls down typically 85 percent from the nominal capacity started. Calendar life testing life of the lithium ion battery um, SLI test uh, that is uh, the start um, lighting and uh, ignition. Uh, so, that uh, uh, test uh, similarly to the lead acid battery gives some indication about the calendar life, uh, how long it will last. And uh, this is a good link, uh, you can download the typical battery test manual, uh, which is basically made for plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. And uh, this link uh, is uh, um, quite good and all, all this test, the exact details you will find uh, in this manual. So, I suggest you to download it from the link given and uh, read it uh, that how exactly this kind of tests are 
done. Then we will have to do uh, the safety and abuse testing. Uh, one, the first one is the mechanical abuse testing. So, that includes crushing the cell at the cell level, crushing the battery, then penetration, uh, nail penetration to uh, do a forced uh, short circuit uh, slow way, then drop, then immersion inside a liquid, rollover and shock testing. Uh, one should also do thermal abuse testing that to know the thermal stability, um, simulated fuel fire, high temperature storage, rapid discharge and tar charge and thermal shock cycling testing at different temperature the battery is exposed and you do the electrochemical charge discharge and see how does it affect the battery performance, I mean the cell performance. Then electrical abuse testing is overcharge or over discharge, short circuit, over discharge uh, with voltage reversal and partial short circuit. So, again these three types of safety testing that is the mechanical abuse testing, thermal abuse testing and electrical abuse testing. Uh, there is a nice document here which you can download from this link and uh, the details you can go through uh, that how exactly what are the conditions that is followed to do these tests. In our laboratory uh, just we have procured a thermal abuse tester and an integrated crush nail penetration and impact tester for the mechanical abuse testing and thermal abuse testing. Um, the test protocol you can see um, the this link also talks about it. Uh, so, usually US advanced battery consortium LLM manual uh, according to that uh, the test will have to be performed. So, there is a stringent specification um, and one can find it uh, the test protocol in this particular link if you click it then you can get this PDF document. So, this is the typical picture of uh, the thermal abuse tester. So, it is having a thermal chamber where you can change the temperature and the battery cycler test is kept aside and uh, you can abuse the battery in the cell level and uh, then uh, you can uh, test the performance. And uh, this is a integrated nail penetration and impact tester for rechargeable cell. So, the cells usually drop from a height. So, the height is specified according to the specification and cell can be dropped from different height. And this is the uh, nail penetration and uh, the crush. So, the battery is crushed within two plates and as you can imagine that these are all smoke free chamber because when, once you are abusing the battery then in most of the instances it explodes, it catches fire. So, all these chambers are uh, uh, explosion proof and fire proof and they are expensive of course and uh, fortunately we received uh, all this equipment in our laboratory, uh, but yet to do any test, uh, uh, but we will be using it heavily in near future. Finally, uh, there is a certification test. So, cert certification test uh, it has two main purposes. The first one is to certify that the product for use according to a specific industry or government application. So, then there is a authority body to certify this and usually uh, DNV they give uh, marine based pack NHTSA they test for automotive applications and this uh, underwriters laboratory UL testing for household appliances and applications. So, these are the certification uh, authority. So, they can certify the battery pack that is developed and second one is to ensure the safety of pupil and equipment while product is being shipped that is also equ equally important that when you get lithium ion battery from abroad, uh, then during transport uh, it should satisfy certain criteria. 
So, basically UN recommendations are followed for uh, transport of dangerous goods and it falls under this dangerous uh, good category. So, this underwriters laboratory they have various types of certifications depending on this number. So, UL 1642 for example, is to test um, certification for lithium cells, uh, UL 1973 that is batteries for light electric rail and stationary applications, UL 1989 is for standby batteries for the storage of renewable energies and UPS, UL 2271 that is batteries used for light electric vehicle applications, UL 2271 is batteries used for electric vehicles and UL CSA oblique IEC 60065 batteries used in audio and video equipments. So, these certifications are important when you purchase a battery pack or cell then um, whether it is certified or not that is important and one should uh, only use those cells um, which are uh, certified by the competent authority. There are many uh, uh, cell makers not in India, but uh, in abroad and uh, faulty cells uh, if you make a battery pack out of it certainly uh, that will be very detrimental and price also varies you can get cells uh, in from different vendors, but whether they are really certified by the confident authority or not that is important. So, this UN test protocol they are internationally accepted and there are 8 specific test protocol. The first one is the altitude simulation T 1. So, simulated air transport under low pressure. So, assuming that it is being transported by air. So, there are test protocols that is followed and certified that the lithium cell you can uh, you can that is useful for you for the air transport. T 2 is the thermal test cell and battery seal integrity and internal electrical connections using rapid and extreme temperature change. So, one of this kind of chambers are used. Uh, uh, following certain protocol before they give the certification. This is important um, the T 3 1 the vibration uh, for our battery pack we uh, also in a process of doing all these things. So, vibration was important that simulates the vibration during transport. So, in a specific frequency range a platform vibrates and your battery is clamped on the platform and if you have a uh, faulty bus bar connection or the wiring etcetera from BMS to the slip board, if they are not they are disconnected then this vibration test uh, the battery will fail. So, that is very important. Then T 4 is the shock uh, simulates the impact during the transport as if uh, the car crashes. So, what will happen to the battery? T 5 is the external short circuit extremely uh, important that simulates the short circuit of the cell and the pack as if two cells they are short circuited they are kept in close proximity. So, you, what if, if they are short circuited then that is also tested and the certification is given. T 6 is the impact uh, simulates the impact of the cell and battery level. T 7 is overcharge evaluates the overcharge condition and T 8 is the forced discharge. So, evaluates the forced discharge condition we call it a deep discharge. So, this 8 test protocols uh, they are uh, they are first uh, tested before the certification is given. So, again the book by John Werner uh, chapter 11, 12 uh, that is mechanical packaging and material selection and bat battery abuse tolerance uh, pages which is um, 131 to 151 of this book that is your study material and all cited documents the I mentioned about the testing protocol. So, that must be downloaded and read it and uh, again this uh, the book by uh, Mika Toll for the battery uh, 
um, manufacturing that is also important for you to read the relevant part. So, in this particular lecture we talked about the understand the end use to make an effective uh, DV P and R plan the table that I showed then recap the failure mode of the lithium ion cells and three basic type of testing that is required for the lithium ion battery which starts uh, from characterization testing then safety and abuse testing and then finally, certification testing. Testing pl plan must take into account any industry specific testing and certifications in addition to those testing requirements driven by the customer. So, both are important whether for your purpose the battery will serve it or not that should also be tested and the vendor uh, should also uh, specify that this particular application this battery module uh, will be useful and even specification must be followed this 8 T1 to T8 to ship lithium ion cells modules and pack. Thank you for your attention.